Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is from my good friend the Holy Crusader, or everyone read it no sleep. Of course, as ever though, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled The Thing Residing in the Woods Part 2 Let's get straight into that. We gave each other a fist bump and walked up to the trap door. And looking down through it, we saw a hallway that was about seven feet tall. John was first to jump in. Get down. He looked up at me. There's a slightly open door at the end. I jumped down and as soon as my legs hit the ground, I could feel immense pain in my legs. I completely forgot about my wounds. I was barely able to keep a scream of pain inside of myself. John helped me get up. And when I was standing, I looked around. There was a hallway in only one direction and with a door about a hundred feet in front of us. And John and I slowly approached the door. It was made of old rotten wood, same as the one that the trap door was made of. And John started opening the door. And before it was fully open, I noticed something on the floor. Upon taking a better look, I realized it was Amanda laying on the floor. And John slowly entered the room and looked to his left. The second he looked to his left, he froze, and soon I would find out why. After I passed through the door, I saw it. The snake-like creature floated on the end of a long room. The humanoid creature stood in front of it, looking at the snake-like creature's face, and there was another body laying down on the floor. I immediately knew that it was Jacob. The snake-like creature looked at the humanoid creature. It looked at it for a second. And then the humanoid creature started turning around. I pulled John behind the door so the creature wouldn't see us. It grabbed Amanda's leg and started dragging it towards the snake-like creature. And both John and I peeked from the corner to see what was about to happen. We wanted to save Amanda, but we didn't even know whether she was alive still. The humanoid creature threw Amanda's body onto the floor in front of the snake-like creature. And the snake-like creature looked at the body and its bioluminescent parts started to glow bright light. The creature opened its mouth widely, and some sort of tubes emerged from the darkness of its throat. Amanda suddenly woke up and screamed. However, she wasn't able to move. She was just lying on the floor. The tubes from the monster's mouth started spinning around each other. We started to hear a noise of air being sucked in. Something started to exit Amanda's body, and she started screaming. Amanda's screams were blood-curdling. It made both of us sick. She was shaking of pain like the creature performed some sort of exorcism. We realized that blood was exiting through Amanda's entire body. It was like a gas-like form of small blood droplets. Amanda's body was drying out and shriveling as her skin turned completely white. And after less than a minute, all of the blood was gone from Amanda's body, and it looked like there was just skin right around bones. Her eyes sunk into her skull, and we could see an outline of her skull. Her head turned over, and her eyes connected with ours. The image of her dead eyes looking at me will forever haunt me. All the droplets that came from Amanda's body formed three long lines of blood. Each of the lines started entering the snake-like creature's body through the tubes. When it was done, it closed its mouth, and its bioluminescent parts except for its eyes. They stopped glowing. John couldn't hold it anymore and threw up. The thing immediately looked towards us. Oh, so you have found me. The deep booming voice echoed through the room. Interesting. The humanoid creature turned to us, screeched and started running. When it came up to John, it tried to swipe at him, but John dodged and stabbed it in its gut. He drew his knife out and stabbed the creature sideways through its neck. And the thing fell to the floor, dead. Impressive. The snake-like creature chuckled. 
there were those who managed to kill my minions before you. But I killed them all before they could escape. Now give you a minute head start, but don't be too enthusiastic. You won't escape. The creature started counting seconds and then the two of us booked it from there. We ran up to the trap door and climbed through it. We ran as fast as we could. I completely ignored the pain in my legs. And as we were getting to the hallway that we needed to turn into to escape, we heard a thing screech. Oh, it was like a combination of hundreds of different human screams and indescribably deep growl. John was behind me, so when I turned to the hallway that led to the exit, I waited to pull him into it, if needed. He appeared in front of me, and I grabbed his arm in which he was holding his knife. Unfortunately, the creature was too fast. I saw it appear behind John, and everything in that moment felt like it was in slow motion. The creature wrapped its gaping maw around John while its eyes looked at me as it devoured my friend. The creature flying so fast it wasn't able to stop itself right in front of me, but instead flew further away through the hallway. I looked down on my hands. I was still holding John's hand, and I stood there for a second out of shock. Rest in peace, John, I said, taking a knife out of his hand. I will never forget you. I turned around and started running towards the exit. I saw the exit. It was just beyond my reach when a snake-like creature dropped from above right outside the exit. And it laughed. <laughs> it's over, child. There is no more running. And it started slowly floating towards me. I admire you. You are closest to escaping out of all of them. Out of all of my prey. What are you? I was shaken. Don't try to understand me, child. I am not of this world. Neither is the one who will conquer it. But what does it matter to you? You will die before he attacks it. My saliva started dropping from the creature's mouth and it dashed towards me. It bit me around my legs and picked me up in the air. I thought I was done for sure. And then I remembered the knife in my hand. I lifted it in the air with both of my hands and stabbed one of the creature's eyes with all of my strength. And the thing screeched in pain and dropped me to the floor. As soon as I fell to the floor, I booked it out of there. I ran as fast as I could. I could barely stand the pain in my legs. After running for some time, I dropped to the floor. Where are you? I heard coming from the direction of the hospital. It sounded like whispering, but I knew it wasn't. You don't need to hide, child. I will find you, no matter what. I turned onto my back and started crawling. I can smell you. I crawled up to a tree and sat up, leaning onto it. I'm getting closer. I closed my eyes and took a large breath, and when I opened them, I saw the thing floating in front of me. Found you. The creature chuckled. <laughs> I gave you my word. You won't escape. I looked at a knife that I stabbed the thing in the eye with. It was still there, stuck in the eye. Its mouth opened wide and blood dripped from its teeth. The tubes started to appear from the depth of the creature's throat, and I prepared myself to die. In what I believed to be my last moments, my thoughts returned to Lilith. Now I hope she survived this madness. I only wish she escaped, and nothing more. And then suddenly a loud bang, followed by at least ten more, came from my left. I could see something small hit on the monster's skin and ricocheting off of it. The thing looked to its right, and its face was lit up by something. Oh, it growled in the direction it was looking in, and then it looked back at me. Our paths will cross again, 
child. <laughs> it chuckled. We will see each other again when the one comes. The thing turned to its left and floated away so fast that I couldn't see it any more after just a second. Maddie, there's a survivor here. I could hear a man's voice coming from my left. I looked in the direction of the voice and saw at least 20 people. Most of them were wearing some type of tactical suit and had automatic rifles. Follow the CR Phantom. This time it was a female voice. I saw the entire group of armed men pass in front of me. Two similarly dressed people came up to me. They weren't carrying any weapons and it was a red cross on their shoulders. They put a carrying bed on the floor in front of me. And as all of that was happening, a middle-aged woman came up to me and crouched. Don't panic, she spoke. You'll live. And after that, everything was slowly turning black and I fell unconscious. I'm afraid I have to stop right here. There is so much that happened since that incident in the woods. I will talk about those new things in the post that will come soon. But there is so much more to this world than what comes through an ordinary person's perception. I write about my personal experiences, mostly. Why am I doing this? Why am I writing, you may ask. Well, you see, it's to warn you. Do you remember the snake-like creature saying that he will come? Well, he wasn't wrong. Whatever that he is, it is near and is the most dangerous thing humanity will ever have to face. And you can only pray that we can stop it. The Ones who watch over humanity. Part 1. Let's get straight into that. I woke up dizzy and my head hurt like hell. I lifted my head but everything I saw was so fuzzy that I only saw grey and an outline of something black. And it was ringing in my ears. Sir, a female voice came from in front of me. Can you hear me? It took a few seconds for my eyes to adjust and for the ringing in my ears to stop. And I was sitting in a chair. And there was a small table in front of me and on the other side of it, a middle-aged woman. She wore dark sunglasses, a suit and her brown hair was put into a bun. Oh, where am I? I asked. We'll tell you when you need to know, sir. And she was looking at some papers that were sat on the table in front of her. We? Oui? I was confused. Let's begin with questioning. She glanced at me for a second before she looked at the paper once more. What's your name? Full name, please. Uh, Keith. Keith Irwin. I decided to answer the question as I noticed that there was nothing else I could have done. And how old are you? Eighteen. She went on asking me some questions you shouldn't know the answers to, and so I skipped that part. What do you remember from the incident in the abandoned building? She lifted her head and looked me into my eyes. The memory of everything that happened came to me like a flash. The images of grotesque things that had happened that night came one by one. All of them led me back to one. Amanda's sunken eyes staring lifelessly back at me. I could only think about how the thing had almost done the same to me. But then... Lilith, I murmured. Where's Lilith? Did she survive? Stop asking questions, the woman said. You will be told everything you need to know after we are done with these questions. When the questioning lasted about ten minutes, and after the woman was done, she picked up the papers, thanked me, and left the room through a metal door behind her. Now that I was alone, I looked around the room. It was a typical interrogation room. One wall was fully made of glass that you could see through only from the other side. And there was a camera in one of the top corners behind me, and a single light just above the table. After waiting for five minutes, the metal door opened, and through it came an older bald man, dressed in a white overcoat and black shirt and pants. His eyes immediately connected with mine, and there was a warm smile on his face. Sorry about Agent Diana. He smirked. She can be uh, very cold sometimes. Come, I'll answer your questions. I stood up carefully, 
I still didn't know where I was or who these people were. The man opened the door for me and let me pass through before him. So, what's the first question you want me to answer? He looked at me while going through his keys. Where's Lilith? I asked him immediately. Don't worry. He locked the doors. She'll join us soon. When he locked the doors, he put away the keys and walked up to me, putting his hand on my shoulder. And despite being much taller than him, I was still scared. I've heard a few times that the greatest fear a human can experience is fear of the unknown. And at that moment, I couldn't agree more. I didn't know who he was or what he was able to do. Let me, uh, let me explain some things to you. He pulled his hand off my shoulder. Follow me. I looked around to see where I was. It looked like a hallway. Grey walls with pipes on the left side and a few doors on the right. I realised that some of these rooms were just like the one I was in moments ago. The others were probably rooms from where we were watched as we were questioned. Welcome to Facility 7. Code name UG Crimson, the man said. My name is Alan Carter and I am the director of this facility. Here, we work for a secret organisation called Equilibrium. The organization specializes in hunting things that shouldn't exist, just like the thing that you encountered. My mind immediately jumped to the conclusion that this was a doing of the CIA or FBI, and I wondered how I didn't make the connection earlier. But then, Alan made me feel like an idiot. Ah, you're probably thinking that we're part of the CIA or something like that, but you'd be wrong. He smiled at me. They don't know about us. Hell. Even most of the government officials throughout the entire world don't know of us. We work above the law and no one decides our fates but us. He sounded proud. The organization is run by a group consisting of directors of all the facilities. We arrived at the end of the hallway and Alan opened the door and let me walk through them, before him once more. The new room I entered was like a hospital waiting room. There were seats on the opposite side of the door, and the room spread about twenty feet on both left and right sides. On the ends of both sides, there were doors just like those I just passed through. Upon looking to my left, I saw her sitting on one of the seats. Lilith, I called. She lifted her head and looked at me. I could see fear in azure eyes. The second she realized it was me, she stood up and ran up to me, putting her arms around me, and I hugged her back. Oh, thank God you're okay, I said. Where's Annie? She took a step backwards and I saw a tear falling over her cheek. The thing caught up to us. She took in a deep breath. It jumped at her and started tearing her up to pieces. I looked as it ripped chunks of meat off her. I was so shocked that I didn't even react. I was just looking at her and she begged me to save her. She stopped after a few seconds. And the creature looked at me and snapped me out of my trance. I beat it to death with a pipe that I had. After that, she called the cops, Alan said. We intercepted a call and we were there soon. And what did you tell the cops? I asked Alan. Do they know about equilibrium? No, they don't, Alan smiled. I won't answer your first question. There are some things only higher-ups can know and this is one of them. How's your leg? Lilith asked me. I looked down and lifted my trousers. My wounds were almost completely healed. I immediately looked at Alan. How long have I been out? I asked him nervously. Two days. He pointed at Lilith. She waited for you to uh, wake up the entire time. I looked at Lilith and saw her smiling at me. Even though the situation I was in was terrible, I felt warmth in my heart. Wait, how did I heal so fast? I looked back at Alan. Ah, we have special tars and medicine kit. He spread out his arms. We get them from the creatures we hunt. You'll learn about all of that soon. But for now, you should rest. I'll show you to your apartment. Apartment? I was confused. Yes, an apartment. People who work for Equilibrium can't just roam around because there's a risk of them revealing what we're doing here. So, we have apartments inside of the facilities. Now we left the room and entered a hallway similar to the one connected with the waiting room. However, people were passing through this one. And they were mostly staff members like cleaners and people that looked like scientists. And there was one guy with an axe, but he didn't look like security. Well, he was something else. He was a hunter. 
The axe was made of some dark grey metal I saw for the first time in my life. And after walking a few minutes, we arrived at a door on which stood a sign, and it read, Room 506. Alan took out his keys again and opened the door. This will be your apartment, he said. Upon entering, I immediately noticed a large window on the other side of the room. A light shined inside through it, and the rest of the room looked a bit larger than the usual living room. I walked up to the window and was mesmerized by what I saw. It was a park, where there were trees, paths made of gravel, a lake. I looked up, but there was no sun, just a roof and a large strong lamp. That's amazing, isn't it? Alan said. Our engineers made that lamp circle around like the sun. It's a mini ecosystem. It's made so that people could enjoy their free time, get their mind away from the terrible things they see daily. At a room, all of this was huge. Looking at it made me ask only one question. Where are we? The location of this facility is still classified for you, but I can tell you that we're deep underground. That's what UG in the name means. And does that mean... I went to ask, but Alan interrupted me. Yes, there are more than a few underground facilities. There are underwater facilities, but they are only three, and they are smaller facilities above land. Those people, however, don't do work that would reveal them to what we're doing here. I turned around and looked back at Lilith. She was biting her nails and looking at me. Let me show you to your bedrooms, Alan said. There were two doors on each side of the room. Alan took Lilith through one of them while I took another look through the window. I'll show you the rest of the facility tomorrow, Alan told me as he put his hand on my shoulder. Also, look at this, if you want some privacy. He ended his sentence as he pressed a switch on the wall next to the window. The window blackened and the lights in the room turned on. Ah, let's go to your room. He opened a door nearest to the window. My room stood on the opposite side of the one Lilith got. The room had a bed, a closet, and a table with some stuff on it. There was a laptop, a notebook, and some stuff to write with. And there was a door that led to a bathroom. There's some fresh clothes in your closet. You might want to change. There will be another two people moving here today, so try to make the best of the first impression. He said as he put a smile on his face. He gave me a key for the apartment and room, and then left. Oh, by the way, he said, leaning through the door. If you're hungry, there's a cafeteria on the end of the hallway that way. And he pointed to my left. When he was gone, I opened a closet and dressed in a new clothes. I laid on a bed and looked at the ceiling. I need alcohol. I whispered to myself and remembered that I saw a fridge next to the table at eleven quarters. I stood up and opened the door. Looking up, I saw Lilith sitting at the table. She was holding a glass in her arm. There was a bottle of whiskey in front of her, and I walked up to the table. Are you okay? I asked her. I'm scared, she replied. We don't know where we are. We don't know who these people are. We don't even let me stand on the stuff that happened back in that forest. I'm scared too. I told her as I put my hand onto hers. For the same reasons you are, but I know that we'll get through this together. I guess you're right. She said. I smiled. Now, let's drink. I took a glass out the cabinet that was near the table and poured some whiskey into both of the glasses. I'm tired, she said after we had drunk a glass. I should get some sleep. She went into her room. A tiny smile appeared on her face before she closed the door completely. I drank another glass and I was starting to become hungry. And so I stood up and I left the room. I walked to the end of the hall and there stood a large double door. I went through them. As soon as I entered, I could smell all kinds of food. I went to get some food and noticed weird glances from some other people. After getting the food, I went to find a place to sit. Hey, you, the new one. A woman's voice came from my left. Come sit with us. I looked in the direction I heard the voice come from. Three people were sitting at a table. A middle-aged woman with short brown hair. A younger bald guy with an eye patch, and that hunter I saw with an axe earlier. I walked up to them, and the woman pulled a chair from beneath the table. Sit, she said. I'm Anya. James, 
said the guy with the eye patch. I'm Carter. The guy with the axe offered me a handshake and I took it. Keith, I said. You guys are, are hunters? Ah, uh, good observer, James said sarcastically. What brings you here? Carter asked. I survived an attack from a creature, I told them. Which one? Anya asked me. I don't know its name, but it was like a snake-like creature. So, see our basilic, James said. Not the most common thing to hear someone escape from it, but not unheard of. It wasn't a see our basilic, as I remembered what I heard from one of the armed men back in the forest before, a blacked out. Uh, if I remember right, it, I heard someone say it was a see our phantom. As soon as I said that, all three of them looked at me wide-eyed. A spoon fell out of Carter's hand and they froze in place. Then they looked at each other. How? Anya stuttered. How did you do it? Ah, no one's ever escaped from it, Carter told me. It managed to kill everyone in a group of nine hunters without any problem, and you escaped it? Y yeah, I said confused. They explained how Equilibrium sent groups of hunters after CR Phantom. None of them returned. However, the corpses were found, missing all bodily fluids. Some of them had cameras on them, so they managed to film the thing. It was, and still is one of the deadliest creatures Equilibrium has come across. They're training to become a hunter, Anya said. There's no way they'll miss an opportunity like this. I was thinking about that as I walked back to the apartment. I didn't know whether I should have been filled with joy because I'll become something that a few people have had a chance to become. However, only one thing was certain. Lilith and I were to become hunters, even if we don't want to. Here he comes, I heard when I opened the doors to my apartment. This is one of your roommates. A guy dressed in the same uniform as Alan said. Who are you? I asked him. Where's Alan? Ah, he needed to take care of something, the man said. I was ordered to show the apartment to two of these. He pointed at two people that stood next to him. One was a dark-haired guy on the skinnier side. His eyes were dark too. The other one was a girl, and she too had dark hair but green eyes. She was insanely tall, at least six six. I'm Keith, I told him. Lilith's sleeping. A lot happened in the last few days, so she's tired. Jamie, the girl said. I'm Alex. The guy said quietly. Wow, the man chuckled. You're already getting together perfectly. Take a rest. You'll be shown the rest of the facility tomorrow. Here are your keys. He said as he gave them to my new roommates and left. So, I started. What brings you here? I asked as I took out three glasses and a bottle of whiskey Lilith and I had started earlier. I poured the whiskey inside all of the glasses and gave my new roommates theirs. Well, there was a cave near the town that I lived in. Alex picked up one of the glasses. Well, there was a legend of some creature that's a combination of man and wolf. Something similar to a werewolf, but not quite like that. Well, he sipped from the glass. I went to check it out one day. I took a camera in hopes of filming it and becoming famous. Well, he looked at me. I found no such thing as a wolf man. I found something else. A group of five feet tall humanoids. There were seven of them, and as soon as I saw them, I ran out of there. I called the police, and the next thing I remember is waking up in an interrogation room. He stopped. What about you? I looked at Jamie. What? She asked. Oh, uh, sorry. I was thinking about something. What did you ask? What got you here? You know, like, what did you encounter or something? Oh, my father worked a night shift further away from our house. He always returned tired, but happy to see us. One night, when he came back, he was full of energy, but grim. Well, there was no smile on his face. He didn't even greet me and my brother. His behavior only got worse and worse. Until he just snapped one day. She stopped for a second. His face peeled off revealing a pale creature. Claws protruded through the skin and flesh under his fingers, and his back tore apart to reveal fur. And she looked me in the eyes. He killed my mother first. He bit her head off and moved on to my brother. 
I'll never forget the screams he let out, as what was disguised as my father slowly drove one of its claws through his throat. And then, then it looked at me. I managed to escape to our garage and lock myself inside, but the thing was breaking down the door. As she looked at the glass and contemplated, she decided to drink. Thinking fast, I, I picked up the chainsaw. The thing burst through the door and jumped at me. I managed to turn on the chainsaw, putting it in front of me and drived it through the creature's chest. I got up all bloody and called the police. While waiting for them, I heard a commotion in my garage. I went to look and a thing was getting up. I locked myself inside a bathroom, hoping that the thing wouldn't find me before the police came. I heard footsteps in front of the bathroom door, and then breaking off the main door. The thing screeched and ran towards the main door. I heard shots. The bathroom door opened and there stood an armed man. He took out a gun and shot me with a dart. I was knocked out and, same as you guys, I woke up here. Listening to these stories, I was kind of relieved because Lilith and I weren't the only ones who went through something like this. On the other hand, these people shouldn't have experienced such grim things at their age, just like me and Lilith. I'm sorry you had to live through that, I said before telling them my story. We survived the unsurvivable. We took some more before going to sleep, and before falling asleep, I thought of the thing I was told by those three hunters. In Alex's sentence, was I really special? I thought to myself, were we? I thought when my mind diverted to Lilith. I didn't hope she'd be okay. I knew she'd be, but I didn't know what had become of our relationship. I woke up when I heard knocking at my door. Who is it? I asked. It's me. Lilith's voice came from the other side of the door. Mr. Allen is here. He came to show us the rest of the facility. I immediately got up and dressed. When I opened the door, I saw Lilith smiling at me. Hey, she said. Keith, Alan's voice was loud. You're finally awake. I looked at him. Jamie and Alex stood behind him, waiting for us to start. Let's, let's have breakfast together. Alan told us as he put his hands together. Follow me. There were even more looks in our direction this time. However, most of them were focused on Alan. They probably don't see the director of the facility in the cafeteria often. First, Alan took us to take a walk through the park, and we could see from our apartment. And walking through it, I noticed many windows in all of the walks. All of them were apartments. And while walking, I sped up to be able to walk next to Alan. I met three hunters yesterday. I told him. Well, that's great. He looked at me smiling. They told me I'll become one of them. <laughs> Wasn't it obvious already? He chuckled. They... I stopped for a second. They also told me of the CR Phantom. Alan stopped walking and put his arm on my chest to stop me. He looked me in the eyes, and I could feel the anger build up inside of him. Tell me their names, he told me. What are you going to do to them? I asked him. That's none of your business, boy, he told me. Now, spit it out. Even though he was almost a head shorter than me, I was terrified of him. They didn't tell me their names. I lied. I didn't want to be responsible for their death. He looked at me for about a second and then returned to his old self. He put a smile on and had a warm grandpa vibe. Well, now that you know of it, he started. What's the point of keeping it a secret? See our phantom, the creature you encountered? It's probably the most dangerous living thing on earth. Lilith and you were the first to survive an encounter with it. I looked down at the gravel we were walking on. I kept thinking about what we did that allowed us to escape. Its real name is For Ragnar, and it came from another world that is, from what we heard it speak on the tapes, trying to conquer ours, he said. He keeps speaking of something that will come and bring the end of this world, but we still haven't found out what it is. That's all I'll tell you for now. You will learn about this. Learn? I asked. What? You thought we'd train you how to fight, but don't teach you about what you fight against? You'll learn the weaknesses of the creature you hunt. If you don't, you'll be dead in seconds. He showed us the rest of the facility. We met the forger, Mike, who forges weapons for hunters. He explained that they use a special type of metal, alloy of multiple different elements that make it insanely sharp and strong. 
and thanks to this, the weapons hunters use are able to pierce the skin of the creatures they hunt. He also makes darts for crossbows, and there are two types of crossbows hunters use. And one of your usual crossbow, well, the second one sits on your hand. It's much smaller than the first one, and is used as a secondary weapon. He tells us that making bullets out of it isn't possible. The metal is so hard that it can't be formed into such small pieces. It made no sense to me, but, <laughs> oh well, I'm no expert. Ah, when you finish your training and education to become hunters, I had a look at us. You'll be able to choose your weapons. We don't have strict equipment for our hunter, except for one thing. You have to wear a special dark brown overcoat made from another special material that protects you from the cryptids. We were shown the training area too. It looked like your typical army training area. There was a gym on the outside course, built similarly to the park. You're trained to become hunters here, Alan told us. You're starting tomorrow. What? Jamie protested. Isn't it a bit too soon? Ah, don't worry, he replied. He won't stop with the hard stuff. That will come later. And how long does how long does this take to finish the training? I asked him. Uh, most often, it takes people about six months to finish basic training. Then, you were trained for your weapon of choice for a month. After that, you learn about the cryptids. That part lasts another month, but you'll need to pass a test to finish it. It sounds a bit useless, but believe me, it can mean a difference between life and death. How many of us will be training? Lily fast. I believe there are two other teams, Alan said. Teams? Alex lifted his head and looked at Alan. Yes, Alan looked back at him. You are one team. We have teams because some cryptids are so dangerous, they need multiple people to hunt them down. The last thing Alan showed us was the library, and it was filled with all kinds of books about cryptids. Some of them were written all the way back in the 17th century. You'll be taught about cryptids here, Alan said. There's a room connected to the library. Oh, by the way, we also have a collection of some cryptid remains, he said as he pointed to a skull hanging from one of the walls. It was a large canine-like skull, but it had horns pointed forward above its eyes. It was far larger than any skull of any known canine, rivaling that of a moose in size. We all froze after seeing it. I couldn't believe that things like this one existed alongside us for so long, but we never saw or interacted with them. How were they so good at hiding from us? Ah, a werewolf, Alan said while putting his arms on his hips. They are ferocious beasts, one of the stronger cryptids, but no match for our hunters. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. What an absolutely intriguing and riveting story this has turned into. Big, big thank you to the Holy Crusader. Stay tuned for the next updates to this one, guys. There's already two others come out, but I thought this was a good point to stop the story before we head into those. Of course, as ever, though, a big thank you to the Holy Crusader for allowing me to narrate his work on the show. Really did enjoy this and certainly look forward to more of your work in the future. Guys and girls, as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help with the channel and that community further. Why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew? If you think you got the minerals and could pen the next big hit, then please do get in touch with myself at the brand new contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everybody's had a splendid week halfway through now, guys, on the long run to the weekend. Hope you got lots planned with friends and family, enjoying the summer sunshine and getting out and about in the fresh air. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry. <laughs>